Hi, good morning. I'm Mrs. Austin. And I'm Mrs. Erringer. And we're here today to kick off our Bullying Awareness Series. We see media coverage of bullying and cyberbullying cases which come to an extreme and tragic end. Parents, schools, and the entire communities express strong opinions on how to deal with bullies and wonder what we could have done to protect the victim. But really, what is bullying? It's a problem behavior based on power relationships in which a student or a group of students uses power aggressively to cause emotional or physical pain and distress to another student. So how do we identify the difference between bullying and conflict among our peers? There are four specific characteristics that can qualify a situation as bullying. The first is intentional. Children can hurt others by accident. Bullying, however, is always intentional and meant to cause some sort of harm, whether it is physical or verbal. This behavior may persist even after the victim has asked the bully to stop. In most cases, bullying happens over and over again. This repetitive behavior often targets children that they know will not do anything about the behavior. As long as they continue bullying, they'll continue to do it as long as they like. It's extremely hurtful and it's a negative behavior that may include physical, verbal or physical harm. The types of hurtful behavior that qualifies bullying are varied, but they will always cause some sort of harm to the victim. An imbalance of power means if two people hold an equal amount of power, one cannot bully the other. A situation where there's an unfair match may be a result of age, size, strength, or social status. Bullying includes not only physical aggression, but verbal, spreading rumors, socially rejecting someone, or isolating another student. What role do we play? When aware of a bullying situation, everybody plays a part. But which one, is, which one are you? The bullies are often hot-tempered, inflexible, overly confident, and don't like to follow rules. They often lack empathy and may even enjoy inflicting that pain on others. The bullies often desire to dominate and control others and they perceive hostile intent where none exists and they may overreact aggressively and support violence. Victims are girls and boys of all ages, sizes, and backgrounds. Some children are more likely than others to be victimized because they appear small, weak, or insecure. They may be sensitive or appear different from others. An important new strategy for bullying prevention focuses on the powerful role of the bystander. Depending on how bystanders react or respond, they can either contribute to the problem or help with the solution. Bystanders rarely play a completely neutral role, although they may think that they do. There are many types of bullying. One, physical. Physical bullying involves a hurting a person's body or possessions. It includes hitting, kicking, punching, spitting, tripping or pushing, taking or breaking somebody's things, or making mean or rude gestures. There's also verbal. Verbal bullying involves saying mean things. It can include te teasing, name calling, inappropriate sexual or racial comments, taunting, or threatening to cause harm. Relational. Relational bullies work to damage a victim's social status and relationships. It's especially common among girls. Relational bullies often do this to increase their own standing or to control others. It's sometimes referred to as mean girls. Reactive. Reactive bullies coax others into harming them. It's often unclear who the true bully is, and a reactive bully incessantly taunts a peer until the peer snaps and reacts with physical or verbal aggression. Reactive bullying may be the most difficult type of bullying to identify. This is because the reactive bullies also tend to be victims of bullying as well. There's also cyberbullying. This is used to spread rumors, threaten others, and make life miserable for victims. This is a collective or group role this is collective or group note writing or any bullying used through the use of texting, Facebook, Instagram, Ask.fm, or any other way through technology. Inside and outside of school and hostile environments. Remember, Whiteland Community High School can hold students accountable for inside and outside school behavior because it can affect a victim's learning environment. Now, tonight we have the answer to a question everyone has been asking about a big story we reported. Jonathan Martin, pro football player, 6'5", 300 pounds, said his teammates bullied him. And a new report tonight reveals how you bully someone that big and how deeply it can cut. ABC's Ryan Smith has the new details. 
Today we learned what it takes to push a six foot five inch, 312 pound offensive lineman out of the sport he loves. The NFL's independent investigator releasing a report ticking through how Jonathan Martin and others were victims of frequent harassment at the hands of Richie Incognito and other players. Evidence of vulgar sexual comments about Martin's mother and sister, sometimes coming multiple times a day. Incognito's voicemails and text messages calling Martin the N-word and Shinebox, and in-person jokes about slavery and homophobic and other degrading slurs hurled by other linemen with such frequency that it became, according to Martin, quote, a routine part of his life with the Dolphins. During it all, Martin emailing his mother, quote, I'm a pushover. And investigators say there was a notebook kept by Incognito in which he speaks of breaking j -Mart. It's a notebook, the report says, he later asked teammates to destroy, evidence that he knew he was doing something wrong. Today's finding, a blow to Richie Incognito. His lawyer stating the, quote, NFL report is replete with errors. Jonathan Martin was never bullied by Richie Incognito or any member of the Dolphins offensive line. But the report, firm in its assessment of bullying, goes on to say, quote, even the largest, strongest and fleetest person may be driven to despair by bullying, taunting and constant insults. Ryan Smith, ABC News, New York. By now, you've heard about the new documentary called Bully. It's a disturbing look at what too many of our kids endure at the hands of cruel classmates. Tonight on Dateline, Kate Snow has an in-depth look at a young Irish girl who became one of the first cases to prompt a national debate about bullying. And Kate joins us now with more. Okay. Good morning, Lester. Phoebe Prince was just a freshman in high school when her family moved to the U.S. It was meant to be an American adventure, but instead Phoebe took her own life. And now her family, friends, and even one of the girls accused of bullying Phoebe are speaking out. Along the Connecticut River, there is a picture of New England's serenity and prosperity. It's a town where hardworking families live and others want to. It's one of the places, if you lived in a surrounding community, that's where you'd want to move. I'd like to move to South Hadley. Successful so, town. It is. For a pretty Irish teenager, South Hadley, with its deep Irish roots, was a welcoming place at first. But then the good cheer faded. If you didn't actually grow up there, you were considered an outsider. Um, it takes a lot to just be a normal person. It all led to something so horrible, it would send chills through parents everywhere. Just five months after moving to America, Phoebe Prince had hanged herself. Her father, Jeremy, got the call that Phoebe was gone and that his youngest daughter had tried to save Phoebe. She told me that she had tried to undo the knots around Phoebe's neck and couldn't. What is it to, as a father, to hear that news? What races through your mind immediately? I think natural defense mechanisms in the mind let you take it slowly bit by bit and realize the full horror of it. Elizabeth Scheibel was the district attorney who investigated Phoebe's suicide. She came to this conclusion that Phoebe wasn't just bullied, but hounded by classmates shortly after she started at South Hadley High. Our investigation revealed that it was, in fact, a campaign. A campaign of what? A campaign of tormenting? Of tormenting, of making her life miserable. More than two months after Phoebe's death, six students were charged, facing potential criminal convictions and possible jail time. One of them was Sharon Channon Velasquez. I remember freaking out and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I know I didn't do anything. She insists she never bullied Phoebe, and others began to question the charges when disturbing details from Phoebe's past surfaced. This is still a very sad story. It's just not the sad story that we were originally told. In the end, Sharon and four of the students pleaded to misdemeanor charges in the case, no jail time, limited probation. A charge against the sixth student was dropped. Now Sharon just wishes she could take back everything she said to Phoebe. That I'm sorry and I didn't know. 
to everything that you were going through. And I would have tried to help. Because she didn't deserve any of the things that happened to her. This is a story that really tore a family and a town apart. The six accused students had their lives turned upside down. Phoebe's father said to me the only thing that gives him some comfort is that his daughter's story caused change. Massachusetts passed an anti-bullying law after she died, and he hopes that people will watch tonight and really talk to their kids, Lester, about what's happening at school. And everybody gets torn apart by this. Right. It's, uh, it's a show that people need to watch. Kate, thank This year, over 5 million American kids will be bullied at school, online, on the school bus, at home, through their cell phones, and on the streets of their towns, making it the most common form of violence young people in this country experience. The consequences from bullying can be extremely painful and humili humiliating for everyone involved. Each one of us has the ability to make a difference. Our actions can change someone's day, which may change someone's life, but you have to but you have to show up and make the effort to actually see the results. Remember, doing nothing is always the wrong response.